Hello everyone and welcome to this workshop. So today is part two of our three-part online workshop series on breaking through PCOS and endometriosis. So welcome everyone to part two. Today we are talking all about hydration and how that can support us to heal from things like PCOS and endometriosis and even period pain and irregular periods. So Again, just a couple of housekeeping items. Um, this is going to be recorded and I will be sharing this recording with all of you that are here as well as any of those who couldn't make it live. So um, knowing that, just know that as we're going through stuff, if you're wondering, uh, if you think you missed something or you missed taking notes um, or you're wondering um, or you're trying to remember something, just know that you're going to be getting the replay so you can always go back and uh, watch and take notes um, at that time. So. Uh, with that, let's get in. So I'm just going to share my screen. All right, so I'm just getting into the slides here. All right, so let's dive in here. So how many of you would like to wake up in the morning and know that you're gonna feel great that day? All right, so I just want you to think about this for a second. How would that feel, waking up and knowing that you're not gonna be in pain, knowing that you're not gonna to have to wonder if your period is coming today or not? Or what about waking up knowing that you're gonna have the energy that you need to get through the day, to actually get through and enjoy the day? What would, be, what would that be like for you? So I just want you to, to sit and think for just a second and really imagine what that would be like for you and what that would mean to you. So seven plus years ago, um, this was my reality. All right, I would wake up assuming that I was going to have to drag myself through the day, wondering what side of the bed my skin was going to wake up on. <laughs> Um, or if I may or may not get my period that day. So I always wore a liner just in case because my period was so um, irregular that I just never knew. Um, and or wondering if I was even going to have the energy to get up and, and go throughout my day. So there was always something to worry about. This is how I was waking up. And I know that many of you have heard um, my story. And in part one of this workshop series, I go into it a little bit more. So today I'm just going to share briefly with you about why how I came to be where I am today and why I'm so passionate about what I do. So growing up, I really struggled with an irregular or non-existent cycle, as well as acne as a teenager. And these led to a great, a, really, a real lack of confidence in myself um, and in myself as a woman. So with the only option offered to me at the time being birth control, I went on the pill at a very young age. And for 10 years, the pill did its job of making sure my period showed up in each and every month. But little did I know that I was simply masking a symptom and that the root cause was still brewing underneath. And in 2012, that root cause showed itself again when I went into labor with our beautiful baby boy three months prematurely at just 27 weeks gestation. So he weighed just 2.2 pounds and he would stay in the hospital for three months. And this was my wake-up call, right? Having to watch our son literally have to fight for his life and seeing his strength and deter determination to not only survive what he did, but to really start thriving, caused me to take a stand for my own health. And that's where my healing journey truly began. And it was a journey that took me five years, okay? It took me five years to finally find the information that got right down to the root cause of my symptoms. <clears throat> and it turned my health around and literally changed my life. So I was able to regulate my cycle. Right? For the, fir the first time I got my period two months in a row, I always say that I was the only woman alive happy to see her period. Um, my energy improved tremendously, so I was no longer having to drag myself out of bed. My anxiety reduced, and I finally understood what had been behind my acne all those years. So healing my body really ignited a passion in me to spread the word, and I wanted every other woman suffering to know that she could heal. I wanted her to know that she didn't have to suffer and that she didn't have to be in pain. So I don't want you to have to wait five years to get out of pain. Right? I don't even want you to have to wait another day, never mind five years, which is why I'm here and so passionate about spreading the work that I do. So today I'm super excited to dive into hydration and the real effects that it can have on your period. 
So today we're going to be talking about how hydration supports detoxification to heal from things like PCOS and endometriosis. Um, we're going to talk about how hydration goes beyond water because it is so much more than water. And we're going to get right into foods as well. So we're going to talk about foods that actually hydrate and foods that dehydrate. And then we're going to have some time uh, for some questions at the end. So if you have questions as we're going through things here today, feel free to type them in the chat and um, I'll be sure to answer them uh, at the end here. So my mission is really to break the silence that exists around women in our cycle, right? Uh, I want to take a stand for women so that we can get out of pain and live the lives that we were truly meant to live, right? No more suffering and pain in silence, right? No more being held back. Just having health that can really support the lifestyle that we really want to create for ourselves. So did you know that 75% of North Americans are chronically dehydrated and they don't even know it. All right, that's a huge number, 75%. Now, dehydration might look something like dry skin, a dry mouth or an increased thirst. It might look like headaches, um, edema or fluid retention, uh, infrequent urination, so if you can go a long time without peeing, um, or lethargic, that real heavy kind of tired feeling. All right, so these are symptoms that we often associate with um, being dehydrated, right? These are things that we can either see or feel, and they're often associated with being um, dehydrated. But did you know that it can also look like cysts on your ovaries, adhesions on your uterus, period pain, right? That pain that you experience every month, irregular periods, and even weight gain. All right, lastly, it can also look like a weakened immune system. Now, is, does this sound like dehydration to any of you? I just want to ask a question out there. So type yes or no in the chat if you have ever um, associated any of these symptoms with dehydration. All right, just go ahead and type it in the chat. Because most people don't, right? We don't think about these things um, as being related to dehydration because we don't really understand the full extent of what hydration really means to our health or our ill health. So that's really why we're here today is to dive deeper into that so you can understand how to properly hydrate your body and um, support your health. So hydration. So hydration at the cellular level, right? I'm talking right down to our cells here, allows for the proper functioning of every cell in our body, all right? So hydration at the cellular level allows the proper functioning of the cells of our body. It allows the proper function of, of the, all of our organs of every bodily system and every process that takes place in the body. All right, so knowing that, you can understand why it's so, so important to learn how truly hydrating our bodies is so, so important to our health, right? And you can understand how important it is to understand how we can actually hydrate our bodies. So today we're gonna to be talking about the liver, all right? I want to start there because the first thing that we're talking about here is hydration and detoxification and how they are so, so, so intrinsically linked. And your liver plays a huge, huge role in that. So the liver plays a key role in the development of things like PCOS, endometriosis, cysts, fibroids, adhesions, all right? Period pain and irregular periods, right? It's one of our major detoxification organs. I'm sure you all know um, it's well known for detoxification. But I want to take a little bit of time to explain to you the role that the liver truly plays. So in part one of this workshop series, we talked about toxins and the role that they can play in our ill health, um, specifically how they can relate to um, our reproductive health. And so I want to explain to you a little bit about how this happens. So <clears throat> Our liver is so intrinsically linked with these things because it is our filter, right? When we take in toxins or anything um, that isn't beneficial to our body, it is our liver's job to disarm them and escort them out of the body, make sure they get out of the body. But as we learned in part one, because of all these toxins that we're exposed to these days, our livers are under a huge amount of stress. All right, and they are overburdened, they are overworked, and they are becoming compromised because they've just, they're exposed to things like chemicals, man-made chemicals that our body was just never meant to have to handle. They're definitely not at the load that we consume them in today. 
And then on top of that, we eat a diet that's not necessarily conducive to supporting the health of our livers. <clears throat> so all of these things um, lead up to a, a comp compromising the function of the liver, which means that some of these toxins end up in other areas of our body, like in our reproductive system, um, wreaking havoc on our health. So the liver plays a key role and hydration is key to this because the liver is a huge, uh, is a major detoxification organ, ensuring that we're hydrated actually allows the liver to do its job of cleansing and detoxifying and making sure those toxins get all the way out of our body. So another thing to know is that the toxins that we're actually exposed to themselves, in addition to being toxic, they're also actually dehydrating. So it's kind of like a double whammy there. So proper hydration supports the liver to be able to detoxify. So it's really important to understand, you know, the true root cause of all of these things, because like I said, that's how we know how to support ourselves to heal. So knowing how important hydration is to the liver and knowing how important the liver is to healing things like PCOS and endometriosis, that tells us where we can start, right? Gives us a great starting, starting point. So another major system in detoxification process is the lymphatic system. And the lymphatic system is really meant to filter out very small toxin particles, all right? So while the liver handles um, things on, you might think of like a macro level, the lymphatic system is meant to come after the liver, and so it's meant to um, filter things out on a more of a micro level. But <clears throat> when our livers are compromised and they're not able to get rid of all the things that they should, some of those end up in the lymphatic system, and our lymphatic systems can actually become clogged with these larger particles that it's not meant to handle, and this actually slows the detoxification process. So this is actually a huge contributor to acne. If any of you out there are struggling with acne, addressing the state of your lymphatic system is huge, all right? And a big way that we can do that is by, by hydrating ourselves so we can make sure that we're flushing all these toxins out. So I just wanna make a note here. So there are things out there like lymphatic massage and drainage, and um, we actually, I actually know a place here in Calgary that does this, um, and they're wonderful there. And so I just want to make a note on that. So while things like lymphatic massage and drainage are wonderful tools to be able to support our bodies to heal, those things exist, especially kind of lymphatic drainage. <clears throat> it exists to help us because for some reason our bodies aren't able to do it on their own, right? That's why we use these kinds of tools. So while I like them to be able to be a tool that we can use while we're healing, it's also extremely important to be addressing the root cause of why our lymphatic system isn't able to filter and drain on its own. All right, so I like the lymphatic massage and drainage. It's just not something that I, we shouldn't have to use it as a long-term um, tool. It should be something that we can use in the short term to help ourselves to heal. And it is a great tool we can use um, to help ourselves to heal, but we're always wanting to make sure that we're healing from the root cause underneath, if that makes sense. <clears throat> So third point that I want to talk um, in, re in relation to hydration and detoxification is thick blood. All right, so dehydration contributes to thick blood. So when our bodies are dehydrated, so is our blood. And what this means is that our blood can become more toxic and less oxygenated. All right, so that means that the blood that's being delivered and that is feeding our organs and the cells of our body is carrying toxins and it's carrying less oxygen than is optimal and so our, our cells and our organs aren't getting the nourishment um, that they're meant to, to get. So it's another important factor um, when we're talking about dehydration. So lastly, we do have other detoxification pathways. So the kidneys and the bowels are two other main ones. So again, here, detoxification ability is compromised when, um, when we're dehydrated in these organs as well. Our skin is another major detoxification pathway. And when we start to see issues on our skin, what it means is that other areas have become compromised. <clears throat> so our liver, our kidneys, our bowels, all these things that come before the skin have been compromised. And now these toxins are making it all the way to the derma, which is the layers of our skin, and they're being pushed out into, um, onto our skin. So this might look like acne, um, eczema, psoriasis, rosacea, rashes, right? All these things are signs that our liver and our detoxification pathways need some help. They need our assistance. And again, 
hydrating is a huge way for us to be able to support that detoxification process. So I just want to take a second to tie back to um, PCOS, endometriosis, period pain, and irregularities, because that's why you guys are all here. So dehydration and compromised detoxification lead to dehydrated cells and organs, even in the reproductive system. Right? And so we've just we've looked at how important hydration is um, to our cells and our organs for them to be able to function optimally. So when we're dehydrated, so are they, and they're not able to function as properly. So like I said, this compromises their function. It also means that toxins are being allowed to wreak havoc on our bodies, right? When our detoxification pathways are not operating optimally, these toxins end up in our bodies and our reproductive systems and they create cysts and fibroids and adhesions that can create a great deal of pain and irregularities in our cycle. So now let's talk about what hydration can do to actually support our bodies. So Hydration supports the liver, lymphatic system, kidneys, bowels, everything to detoxify, right? So it's a huge supporter of detoxification. It helps to thin the blood so that we can deliver clean, oxygenated blood to our cells and our organs. We don't actually want thick blood, we want thinner blood. It rejuvenates and rehydrates every cell and organ in our body. So while we always think about some of these things in relation to, um, let's say, like the fountain of youth and, you know, the defying aging, um, it's also important to the actual functioning um, of our cells and organs, organs as well. And so hydration is also a huge um, supporter of weight loss. So if weight loss is something, our weight gain, sorry, is something that's often associated with PCOS. Um, especially in the form of, you know, that stubborn weight gain that you can't seem to lose. You know, it doesn't matter what you eat, it doesn't matter what you do, you can't seem to lose the weight. And toxins and being dehydrated is a huge, can be a huge underlying cause of that. So if you're someone who has struggled and, like I said, it doesn't matter what you do, you just can't seem to um, shake the weight, it could be because of this. So hydration could really help you to be able to detoxify so that your body can allow those fat cells to release those toxins and then that fat can go as well because it no longer has the job of having to hold those toxins. So hydration, um, extremely important in something like weight loss. So what this means is that cysts, fibroids, adhesions, all these different things can heal, all right? And pain can reduce and your cycles can begin to regulate, which is what we want, right? That's the whole point. So let's get into hydration beyond water. So is all water the same? Heck no, is what that should really say. Um, no, it's not. And so it's really important to understand, excuse me, what water is most beneficial to you and how it can support you, but also how hydration goes beyond water. So that's what we're gonna be exploring next. So drinking hydrating water, right? The first thing that you wanna do is make sure that you're drinking hydrating water. So let's explore a little bit of what, what makes water hydrating. So if we were to pick um, the most ideal water for us to consume, it would be natural, um, fresh water from a spring, from a natural spring. And that would be the most pure, hydrating water that we could drink. And the reason for that is because natural spring water contains loads of vitamins and minerals uh, in it, and that helps to make it hydrating. It contains, um, it contains, uh, it's, sorry, it's filtered, so it's free from impurities and toxins. And you can just imagine a spring flowing in nature through the rocks and how that acts as a natural filter, right? It's just, it's just amazing. And when you, if you were to put your hands under a spring and collect the water, you can just see how clear and pure it is and it tastes just amazing, right? The last part of it that's really important is that natural spring water has a living energy. Or it actually contains energy from literally rushing through um, the the water, the, the mountains or wherever it is, from flowing through that, it actually has an energy to it. And as many of you may know or not know, we as humans are energy as well. So those three things combined, the vitamins and the minerals, the free, being free from toxins and impurities, and the fact that it has living energy is actually what makes water hydrating. It's not the fact that it's wet, <laughs> it's those three components. So knowing that, how can we make our water the most hydrating that we can? Well, the first thing we want to do, which is like we talked about before, is drink filtered water. All right, so I recommend the Berkey filter. It's the one I personally use at home. 
And just so you know, anything that I recommend, it's only some things that I have tried myself and have seen to work and that I like. So we use a Berkey filter. It's a gravity filter that has charcoal filters in it. It remo removes any impurities. And, you know, even if you live in a town or a city, or actually even especially if you live in a town or city, you still want to have a filter because it contains things like chlorine and fluoride, you know, goes through a whole process to make sure they remove all of the um, bacteria. We, don't, we obviously don't want anything harmful in our water, but that actually kind of deadens our water as well. And we don't actually want to be drinking something like chlorine or fluoride either because those are toxins for our liver to detoxify. So if you live, um, if you have to city your town water, I highly recommend still you getting um, a Berkey filter and filtering your water. The second thing that we can do is add lemon or lime to our water to make it more hydrating. Now, as we talked about when we explored how a spring would be perfect water for us because of how hydrating it is, how um, adding lemon and lime makes water more hydrating is because lemons and limes grew from um, a plant, right? They were alive and they are the fruit of a plant. And because of that, they, can, they contain vitamins and minerals. So when we squeeze that in there, we're infusing our water with vitamins and minerals. And on top of that, that lemon and lime has a living energy from the plant that it is on. <clears throat> so we're actually infusing energy back into our water. So I you're, hope you're starting to see how this all ties together here. So again, drinking lemon or lime water makes it more hydrating. Now let's take it a step further. It can also be important to know when you should be drinking your, your lemon water. So a really key point here is that you want to drink lemon water first thing in the morning, right before you eat or drink anything else. And the reason that's important is because our livers wake up at about 3 or 4 a.m. because we're sleeping, we're not eating, and it's their time, it's, 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 sorry, it's, it's time to cleanse and repair itself. So it works hard overnight to cleanse and repair itself. And so when we wake up in the morning, if we drink that lemon or lime water, what we're actually doing is supporting our livers to be able to actually remove all the toxins that it cleaned up. So that's really key to know because while our livers might be working hard overnight, if there's no support to be able to flush those toxins, you know, all of that work is really for nothing. So we really want to make sure that we're being able to support our livers and our bodies to be able to detoxify as best we can. So drinking lemon or lime water first thing in the morning really helps us to do that. And you also want to be drinking that throughout the day to make sure that you're drinking um, hydrated water. Lastly, you can add fresh fruit or veggie slices to your water. And so this doesn't just make it taste nice, it actually has a purpose as well. Again, this is infusing vitamins and minerals from those fruits or vegetables into your water and again, adding um, that life force back in. So the second thing that we want to do is we really want to understand what dehydrates you because when you understand how you might be becoming dehydrated, it, it helps you to know what areas you can address. So <clears throat> the first thing that we already talked, touched on a little bit is toxins. So I'm just gonna take a sip of water here. So toxins themselves can be very dehydrating to us. So being able to support our bodies to detoxify, again, is key in removing those toxins and um, bringing some hydration back to ourselves. Second thing is stress. And I've got little stars around it because, you know, everybody knows this, right? Everybody hears how bad stress is for you. But I think that it's often the last thing that we address, it seems. And I know for myself, it was something I put off until the end. You know, I just thought I could push through, I could manage, I could handle. And what happened with me was that I had everything else going perfectly. I had all of my food, my water, my supplements, my herbs. I had everything, all of my protocols were, were right on. And I was still struggling. And it was because I hadn't addressed that stress, that emotional peace. And once I did, then I saw myself move again off of that plateau that I had, had come on. So I can't stress, for lack of a better word, enough how important it is to reduce stress. So when we're stressed, what we're doing is we're triggering an adrenaline response. We're creating our bodies, we're prompting, sorry, our bodies to create adrenaline. And adrenaline is just the most toxic substance to our bodies. And so on top of it being toxic and corrosive, it's dehydrating. So being able to control your stress is a huge, huge part um, to being able to hydrate yourself. Cooked food, right? Cooked food is actually dehydrating. Now, this doesn't mean that cooked food is bad, right, at all. I eat cooked food. Um, 
So it's, it doesn't mean that it's bad. It's just important for us to understand so that we know how we need to have a balance between cooked and raw and being able to hydrate ourselves. So it's just an important piece of information. All right, high fat diets. All right, and if, if you're on like a high protein diet, um, that automatically becomes high fat because fat is the calorie source of protein or most protein, animal protein and nuts, things like that. The calorie source is fat. So if you have high protein, you have high fat. But high fat contributes to dehydration and it can also thicken our blood. So <clears throat> always want to watch your fat levels um, when you're trying to hydrate yourself. Processed foods, I'm sure this won't be <laughs> um, a shock to any of you. We all know how processed foods um, aren't the greatest for us. So anything that's packaged, uh, processed sugar, salt, all of those things are dehydrating to our bodies, as well as fried foods. So we know fried foods and processed foods aren't great for us, so they're also dehydrating. Coffee, all right, so this might be a little bit of a controversial uh, one or just a hard one for people to hear, but um, coffee um, can be extremely dehydrating. And so when we start our days with coffee, so say you're someone who you know, wakes up and you, know, you have to have your, your jolt of coffee before you can kind of get on with your day, um, just know that that is gonna be stripping uh, a lot of your fluids from your body. And so again, it's, it's information to know so we can start to balance these things. And also the obvious one, not drinking enough water is an obvious way that we can um, become dehydrated. So I also wanted to share with you um, a little bit about herbal teas because again, herbal teas are made from water and they are wet. So you might automatically assume that they are a hydrating drink. So I just want to um, explain to you how this works. So herbal teas are extremely beneficial and I recommend them and consume them myself, but they're actually considered neutral. So they're not hydrating, but they're not dehydrating. So when we make teas, the heat that we use to make the teas is, is a healing, it releases, sorry, the healing compounds in the herbs, right? So it's very beneficial. And many herbal teas are extremely helpful in our healing process. But just know that um, they aren't actually hydrating you, they're healing you in a different way. So if you wanted to use that as part of your hydration, what you want to actually do is add a squeeze of lemon and some honey to your tea to help make it more hydrating. So again, just a little tip for you to be able to make sure that you're um, getting the most out of the things that you're doing. But these are obviously extremely uh, powerful medicinal tools that I use in my healing as well as my client's healing um, journey as well. So as a general rule, let's get into food here for a little bit. So we're gonna talk about food and hydrating versus dehydrating and how you can know how you're supporting yourself. So as a general rule, Cooked food is dehydrating. Again, like I said, it doesn't mean that it's bad. It's just um, a piece of information for you to know. And raw food is hydrating, right? So when I'm talking about raw food, I'm talking about fruits, vegetables, and greens. I'm obviously not talking about meat. I will never tell you to go out and eat raw meat. Um, so when we eat raw fruits, veggies, and greens, those are still in their raw form. And you can just tell when you bite into them, you can feel that hydration, right? That juicy kind of hydration. So Raw fruits, vegetables, and greens have um, hydration, natural hydration contained in them. So again, this is beneficial for us to know because it doesn't mean that one is bad and one is good. It just means that we, we, have, we now have this information to be able to support ourselves to make sure that we have a balance of cooked and raw to be able to support hydrating our body. So let's talk about some ways that you can actually hydrate through food. So one of the ways that I love is salads. And I never used to be a salad person. I always used to fight them and I hated lettuces of any kind. So I used to, I used to like, like a Greek salad. I could eat a Greek salad, um, but I never used to like lettuces and that. And now I have one at least once a day, sometimes twice. And the difference that it makes in how I feel is really how I got addicted to salads. Um, because the energy, literally the energy and the hydration that you can feel in your body is just, it's amazing. So, you know, you wanna load up on the greens and the fruits and the veggies and make yourself a beautiful salad um, with a nice light dressing and, um, you know, you've got some hydration for you. Raw fruits and veggies, like we talked about, right? They contain lots of natural hydration. So you can use those as snacks. I, I snack on fruits and veggies all day. Fruit juices is another way to hydrate ourselves. So I have a, um, Citrus juicer, so it's just like a press that I use for like, I cut an orange in half and I squeeze it down and it makes juice really quick. 
Um, so fruit juices are great. So just a note on, so vegetable juices is the same thing. You can make yourself some vegetable juices and they are very, very, very hydrating. So I just want to make a note on vegetable and fruit juices. Just in case you're buying them at the store, just know that anytime they've been heated, um, that they do lose that hydrating factor. So I personally myself just make my own. It's pretty quick. And if you don't have a um, juicer, and, but you do have a blender, you can blend them and then strain it um, and you can get juice that way. <clears throat> or talking about blenders, smoothies is another great way to be able to hydrate yourself and it's actually one of my favorite ways. Uh, you can also use fruit and vegetable infused water, which we talked about, and coconut water, all right? This is like the master hydrator. So think natural Gatorade, all right? If you're someone who reaches for Gatorade, after you work out or when you're like quenched for thirst, um, just know that coconut water is like a thousand times uh, better for you than Gatorade. It's like nature's way, it's nature's Gatorade, really. It's, it's loaded with um, electrolytes to rebalance you, you know, like especially after a workout, and it's just super, super hydrating to your body. So I wanna give you my personal favorite ways. So some people might just leave it at that, you know, give you some tips on you know, this, these are the types of things you can start incorporating, but I want to tell you what I actually do in my everyday life. I want to share with you um, how I personally hydrate myself because I think it might be helpful to know how I actually do it every day for you guys. So I start my day with lemon water every single morning, and, you know, I also do this with my son. My husband can be hit and miss, um, but I also do this with my son as well. So the first thing to, when we wake up in the morning, we drink our lemon water. That's how we start our day. All right, smoothies. Smoothies is my ultimate favorite way. Like I just, I love smoothies. And you know, you can make them just taste amazing. Fruit smoothies are just like, I can just eat, eat or drink, I guess, drink them up. I just love them. So they have literally replaced my old cereal toast breakfast. And you can just, you can just feel the difference. All right. So if you imagine like a, a processed cereal or toast, um, you know, just even to look at it, you wouldn't think that there's much hydration there, right? So imagine swapping that out for something like a smoothie is just loaded uh, with hydration and just, it just makes you feel amazing. It's a great way to start the day. I use some vegetable juices. Specifically, I use um, celery and cucumber. Cucumber is just an amazing way to support yourself. So if you ever feel dehydrated, if you juice some cucumber, it can just work miracles um, on your body. Fruit juices is another one of my favorite, all right? I love fruit and it is so, so healing for us. So it's amazing, right? When something's good for you and it also tastes great. So some of my favorites are orange juice, like I mentioned, but my actual favorite way is blended up melon. So melon is another one. It's, it's kind of up there with coconut water in that they are just um, immensely hydrating. And so what I actually do is, my favorite is cantaloupe, right? I will just blend up literally like a whole cantaloupe in the blender and then drink it and it literally tastes like um, creamsicle, like a creamsicle smoothie. It's just, it's amazing, it's so good. My son's favorite is watermelon. We just blend up the watermelon and he, he drinks, just drinks it down. So those are some really yummy, amazing ways to be able to um, incorporate some hydration into your uh, everyday routine. So now that we've talked about um, how I incorporate some of these things, let's talk about how you guys can implement it, right? Because that's the goal here is for you guys to take action. So where do you start? All right. And so this is actually a great um, topic. This is where I start with um, my clients as well. So I'm actually going to be leading a um, group program for women starting in January here. And these this is exactly what I do with my clients, all right? I take you through step by step so that you know every single step that you have to take uh, that week and you know where to start and it's, breaking, it's broken down for you step by step. And I find that that makes the whole process um, much less overwhelming um, because all you have to do is focus on that one step. So um, that's what I'm doing for you here today as well. So, what I suggest is that you take in everything that you've learned today, everything that we've explored, all right, and simply pick one area, all right? Just pick one area that you can either bring in or eliminate to increase your hydration for the day. All right, so just pick one area. So like I said, it's always great to get all this information, but sometimes it can be overwhelming, right? So Pick one and start with that. So I'm going to give you some examples. So it might mean replacing your coffee in the morning with lemon water first thing. All right, so that could be something that you do. Or if that scares you, 
<laughs> uh, if the thought of that terrifies you, um, you can maybe swap out your current breakfast for a fruit smoothie. All right, that could be another option. So the point is, pick something that you think you can do and implement it. So I hope that you've received value today so far. Have you all, if you have, type a yes in the chat. Um, I love to hear how you guys are enjoying the content, if it's useful for you, if you've gotten value. So type yes in the chat if you've received value today so far. I really hope you have, it's always my goal. So I do have a challenge for you. So I want to challenge you to take action, all right? Because it's great and all to learn, but without action, we're not actually going to make it, we're not actually going to heal, right? We're not going to improve our lives if we don't take action. Learning simply isn't enough. So I want to encourage you to take action, right? Even if that action today is simply deciding what your action is going to be, all right? So even if you just decide on what you're going to swap in or swap out, to help inc increase the hydration in your body. Even if that's your action, do that, all right? Do it, commit to it, and then implement it, all right? I really encourage you to do that today. So speaking of next steps, um, this is a three-part online workshop series, and we're already two-thirds of the way there. So the next part is part three, and that's where we're gonna be exploring a little deeper into some of the herbs that can really help us heal, and we're gonna also talk about some really healing foods that you guys can bring in to get you out of pain, regulating your cycles, um, and get you having a happy period. So mark your calendars for two weeks from today, which is Wednesday, November 27th. All right, and again, thank you all so much for the shift in today's um, uh, workshop here. Um, I'm sorry that I wasn't able to do it yesterday, so thank you so much um, for the patience in having to switch it to today. I really appreciate that. So. The next one, like I said, it's going to be Wednesday, November 27th from 7 to 8 p.m., same time, same place, over a Zoom video call. And it's really important that you tune in because this is the last one of our three-part series, all right? So I'm giving, away, I'm giving you my special gift. I have a very special gift for you all, so you definitely want to be tuning in for that. And again, if you have girlfriends that you'd love to share this information with, please feel free because the more women that we can get um, – this information into their hands, the better. The more women we can get out of pain, the better. It's always my goal. So feel free to share it. And if they want to um, hop on to our last um, episode here, have them email me at info at jenniferbago.ca and I will send them the information uh, to be able to sign up for um, our last and final workshop. So I wanted to share this um, testimonial with you guys because it really helps to tie in something really important I think. So this is from Michelle and some of you actually may know her. Um, so this was a, um, a testimonial she had left on my page. So it says, um, I just had an awesome chat with Jennifer Bago to get some guidance of some changes I can make. And wow, did I ever learn a lot, so let me share. So the first was to drink more water, duh. <laughs> but she said to have 16 ounces with lemon as soon as I wake up because our liver cleanses at 3 a.m. and this will help flush the flush that out of our bodies. Who knew? She also said that drinking filtered water is important and to add lemon or lime to help the water be more naturally hydrating. I can do that. So this is really important because I think that it's something that we all know, right? We all know to drink water. We all know that hydration is important to our health, but not a lot of us do it, right? Not a lot of us take the time to make sure that we're doing it. And that's what I think Michelle was saying here, you know, in that drink more water, Duh. you know like all of us know but we don't always do it so I just want you to know that if that is you right if you've always known but it's something that you've struggled with a little bit please know that you're not alone um, but also know that just by implementing something so simple like this it can really really help to support your body and really escalate your your healing here today so thanks so much to Michelle for leaving that so as always my mission is really to break the silence around women and our cycles right because I want you to know that you don't have to suffer, you don't have to be in pain, right? There's another way, a better way. That is my goal, it's my mission to get this out there in the world so we can get women out of pain and having them live the lives that they truly wanna live. So saying that, um, that's all that I have for you today and I'm gonna open it up now to um, some questions. So I'm just gonna stop sharing. I'm gonna bring it back to video. There we are. 
So I hope you all found that uh, beneficial and that you got value. Again, it's always my goal to give you as much value as I can, but also give you actionable items that you can start to implement right away so you're not just taking in information, that you're actually implementing this and, having, and seeing the changes that it can make in your life. So I'm going to open it up now to any questions. If any of you have questions, feel free uh, to type them in the chat or any comments, anything that you want to leave. You got value, awesome. It's awesome, I love that. All good, no questions, great info, awesome. Well, thank you so much. If there's no questions, um, thank you so much for joining. And I'm so glad that you got value and that you like the information. And I hope that you're gonna take it home and accept my challenge to put something into action. Just take an act, pick an item, put it into action today and start seeing the amazing results that it can have on your health. So, Thank you so much, everyone, and we'll see you in another two weeks.